All right, welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Today we're going to be looking at a very important conversation, one that is long overdue. And I'm very excited that the Me Too movement is gaining grounds in Nigeria with lots of people who have been sexually abused coming out to speak up and shaming the victims, to shaming the perpetrators, I beg your pardon. Today on the show, we're joined by a young woman who has a bachelor's degree in theology and media studies. And she took part in the elite model Look Nigeria 2011 and Most Beautiful Girl Nigeria in 2013 as Miss Nasarawa. She has eight years modeling experience and has modeled for top designers and she now runs an event staffing agency called the Oiza Company. Now today we're joined with Oiza, joined by Oiza Olayebi. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us, Oiza. Welcome, Oiza. Thank you. Thank now, Oiza, modeling is such a glamorous, um, it's such a glamorous profession. I mean, yes, growing up, I thought that the first thing I wanted to do in my life was model. I thought, you know, that was going to be my big break into the entertainment industry. But here I am, modeling <laughs> news and entertainment. Yes. But people don't get to see the rot that goes on behind the scenes. Yes. And just yesterday, we were seeing lots of people coming out. You came out to share your story of sexual abuse. So maybe we should start with your story as well. Okay, so I, um, I won't, it's not my story, my story. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm, it's okay to say this, but I could relate to the girl's story because she's one of my hostesses. She works with me directly. Um, and she called out a certain agency and shared her story with me. And I could relate with it because I have been sexually abused before um, at age 13. Um, she called me, she was crying, um, told me um, he called her to come to the hotel. So I think what's happening in the industry now is a lot of these young girls are vulnerable and are desperate at the same time. All um, right. Yes. So they're not able to draw the line between being vulnerable and keeping your desperation in check. That mm. way nobody takes advantage of you. And, and that's what happened yesterday. That's okay. what had to come and speak up yesterday. Okay, so I'm happy you mentioned the word desperation because I was going to ask about that. Yes. So that means it exists. It there are actually does. models who yes. actually take steps like that. Yes. So, I mean, in every industry, in every field, all, in everything you do, there's the good and there's the bad. So if I, would, if I was going to say there's no bad, there are no bad models out there, there are no girls who do these things willingly, I would be lying. But what's happened is because of those bad people, they take advantage of the good ones who do not know what to do in a situation like that. The desperate ones will go and say, oh, I'm available. But the ones who aren't desperate, who aren't, I mean, who are just vulnerable, are taken advantage of because of the bad example the bad ones have set. Yeah. What would we say is, we would say that this has always existed in the modeling industry, yes. or is, is this something that is now being more reported because the Me Too movement is catching fire? Yes, so it's something, it's always been there in time past, um, present, and it's going to keep being there. But what's happening now is a lot of people are now being able to speak up. They are getting a bit more vocal now. Um, when, I, when I had my experience, I had nobody to talk to. I had to deal with it on my own, you know. Um, and then six years later, I was able to open up to somebody. So imagine having to deal with that for that long. But now it's easy for these girls because, I mean, there's social media. Um, there's, um, there are NGOs. There are um, organizations that govern these things. So it's easy to just pick a phone, confide in someone, talk to somebody, and bring these people to book. When did your experience happen, or is that, was it modeling industry related, or was it something independent of the modeling industry? It was, it was modeling industry related, you know, because, I mean, I was 13 at the time. Um, I'll just share it very briefly. He told me to, um, he wanted me to model. I didn't know anything about modeling. A young girl, and he says, come, and I came. And um, he told me he wanted me to take bikini pictures. I didn't know what that was. I was 13 at the time. But innocently, I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, and I put on a swimsuit. And, <laughs> of course, it's, it's pretty sensitive for me to talk about it on TV. But, I mean, I, I left that place feeling very, very, very dirty. I mean, he touched me in places he shouldn't have at that age, you know. Um, and took pictures of me. I was pretty much blackmailing me. For a while, yes. Wow. Yes, I mean they do it to a lot of these girls. I, I get messages. They are blackmailing me right now. What do I do? I'm like, it's fine. We'll take it to the right authorities and see what we can do about it, you know. And then six years later, he comes up. Maybe I'm a bit more, I'm wiser now. I'm not as stupid as I was then, and apologizes for what he did. 
and yeah, the rest is history. Okay, so there's been there's been this thing about um, supposed modeling agents, mm. registering agencies, and then girls come up for audition. I'm saying this because I had an experience too, mm -hmm, but I thank mm -hmm. God that I didn't get to go that far. Yeah. The next thing they're telling you is you have to be at a certain place by 8 p.m. You can't go home all night. Mm -hmm. And then they're taking girls to clubs. So mm -hmm. in my own case, there was too much of Jesus, sorry, mm -hmm. in my life at that point to do yes. that because I came from a choir rehearsal to that place. I saw the place and I wasn't feeling good. Mm -hmm. I called my mother mm -hmm. and I'm glad she came. But what if... She didn't. What if I couldn't tell her? So is this how it does that still happen? Because they start does. agencies and it's like it's it's like a I don't want to use that word mm. line of business, so yes. to speak. They give these girls to different men and then we don't understand what's going on afterwards. So the profession is it's high fashion. It's based on what you look like. And then there are till there are signs you would already see. For instance, if I was called for an audition, and that's why I mean that's why I'm trying to create this awareness. There are little, very little things you can know, or you are aware of, that would make you know, oh, okay, this is not, this is a red flag. It's not, it's not proper. Why would you go to an audition? This is not to blame the vulnerable girls because I'm on their side, but why would you go to an audition at 8 p.m.? Mm. So basically, no one should go to an audition at, at night. At 8 p.m. So what are the other tips you would give to girls to protect and prevent themselves from going through this? Okay, so first off, I mean, the internet is your friend now. You can check anything on the internet. There's a lot of agencies out there, good ones and bad ones, known ones, semi-known and unknown. So when an agency approaches you, which rarely happens, um, I mean, they're going to be telling you they want you to model with them. That should be your first red flag because ideally... Even if a, an agency wants you, they won't just wake up in the morning and just see your picture and say, yes, we want this girl. So that's the first red flag. Secondly, they're going to go, oh, come for an audition. I mean, there's a venue. Do your research on the venue. If you see it's a hotel, red, first, second red flag, why are you going to a hotel? Not that they don't do auditions in hotels, but that should be another red flag. Find out, make calls, ask people about these agencies. Ask people if they're under these agencies. And then if you feel the need to still go ahead, never, ever go alone. You know, I've had cases of girls who go for auditions and they don't go alone. And everything is squashed. The people can do what they want to do, you know, because mm, right. they don't go alone. All right. Um, Oiza, you've really shared so many helpful tips, but I know that you've been very vocal as well with yeah. regards to calling these people out. I mean, on Instagram, you called out a certain agency. How would you say that this has impacted you in the past few days? Um, okay, so I didn't see it coming. I mean, you're going to be getting a lot of positive feedback and definitely negative feedback. Um, I'm getting threats from unknown people. Um, some are called semi-threats. I mean, they're telling me stop, don't stop the movements, don't do this, don't do that. But I can't stop because I firsthand know what this feels like. And these are young girls. These girls are not even up to 20. The oldest I've heard is 20. The rest are 19, you're hearing 17, you're hearing 16, you're hearing 15. Even if she was 25, you have no right to take advantage of anybody's innocence and vulnerability and desperation, even if she's a bad person. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep speaking up about it. Um, calling out agencies, I don't, I don't know about that, but, I mean, I'm more for the girls and protecting them. So I'm going to keep being vocal and telling them, do it like this. If there's an issue, call me. If there's, if there's a need to bring anybody to book, we would. We, we definitely would and set Brilliant. an example in the industry. Okay, so I've heard people say um, they're complaining about being abused as models. Somebody was saying to me the other day that, why did you choose to go into modeling in the first place? Mm -hmm. To them, it's not a reputable place to start mm -hmm. a career. Do, has there ever been a time that you got words like that? And do you ever, was there a time when you felt that way? concerning your job as a model? So I would say lucky for me, I'm, and thanks to my agency, um, Best Model Management, I never ever, in eight years of my proper modeling experience, I never had any reason to say I was going to quit. Of course, there are going to be people who don't want to work with you, who don't want to book you, um, who feel you're not good enough. But I mean, I did this for eight years, and I'm still doing it, you know. Um, I never felt the need to. Not that, does, that, not that that doesn't come, you know, not that people would tell you uh, 
you're not good or you won't get news. I'll get a lot of news. People think I'm invincible. People think I get all the jobs in Lagos. And no. I and do they ever look news. down on you? I, I think another angle she's trying to bring you from is people looking at, down on you because you're a model. So people mm. don't understand. Some people do not understand the concept of modeling. Yeah. Mm. Why do you have to do this? Yeah. I mean, we, yesterday we spoke about Arin Zeonisi, who mm -hmm. allegedly put out a post stating that if you're dressed in this yes. you should be sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. And although he's long down taking down not just the post, but his page, mm -hmm. there's still unfortunately lots of men who and women who think like that. Yeah. So have you ever had such comments thrown at you? Even today. I mean, people call me, well, I'm selling my body. I mean, my parents didn't approve of it when I started, especially my dad. But over time, I had to make him see, which is very difficult, especially in a country like Nigeria, where there's all these cases. You know, imagine if in my eight years, I got raped or assaulted or attacked. Mm. How do I explain to him that, oh, this so-called profession, is not the way it is. So I get that all the time. But all I do is prove to people that it really isn't what it is from, ex by example. I'm now, doing speaking about proving to people, or is that we're going to let you go now, but I know that these stories would scare some people, some parents <laughs> from allowing their children yes. to go into modeling. Yes. And some people, that's, that's their purpose, that's their, their career path, mm -hmm. their chosen career path. So what would you say to a parent or to a young person who is interested in modeling but is scared by these stories? Unfortunately, mm. Sexual assault is prevalent in almost every, every workspace, industry. every industry, not just the modeling industry. Yeah. We're exposing the modeling industry because of recent it's been in the face of conversation. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to a young girl, young boy who wants to model, or a parent who has children that want to model but are scared to let them in? Okay, so in every industry, every industry is vulnerable. Um, first thing you'd say is do not be desperate, or I'd say is do not be desperate. If you really love something, it would definitely definitely come to you. It might take time, but you, it will definitely come your way. All you need to do is work hard, um, work on yourself, and every opportunity you need will definitely come to you. Thank you so much, Oriza, for Thank those fantastic so words. Much. And Thank they're you. very important because years <laughs> ago, this would have meant a lot to me because I wanted oh. to be a model oh. so badly. Oh. But I know that you also help young girls. Yes, you know, I connected. do. So those who want to be who are interested in modeling, how can they contact you? And those who want advice and need to speak up as mm -hmm. well. So you can reach me on Instagram. Um, my handle is oiza008. I run um, an event staffing agency as well, the Oiza Company. You can send me a DM anytime. Oh. Anytime. All right. Anytime. Thank you so much for being Thank the big so sister much. in the modeling <laughs> industry that would help our younger ones Thank navigate you. through this space. Thank to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.